Hi friends, Namaste. Today's book is Indica by Greek author Megasthenes. Indica is an account of modern empire by Greek writer Megasthenes. The original book is now lost, but its fragments have survived in later Greek and Latin works. The earliest of these works are those of ancient Greek historian Diodorus Siculus Strabo, a Greek geographer, Pliny, a magistrate of ancient Rome, and Arian, another Greek historian. All are very difficult names. Friends, Megasthenes uh, Indica can be reconstructed using the portions preserved by later writers as direct quotations, rephrase or even paraphrase. The parts that belong to the original text can be identified from the later works based on uh, similar content, vocabulary and phrasing. Even when the content has not been explicitly attributed to Megasthenes, there is a document of Felix Jacob Baez that uh, contains uh, 36 pages of content that can be traced back to uh, uh, Megasthenes. There is another uh, historian by the name of uh, Schwanbeck. He traced uh, several fragments uh, to Megasthenes and based on his uh, collection, John Watson, a Scottish philologist and educator, published a reconstructed version of uh, Indica in 1887. But this uh, reconstructed version is uh, not universally accepted. Schwenbach and John Watson attributed several fragments in the writings of the 1st century BCE writer Diodorus to Megasthenes. However, Diodorus does not mention Megasthenes even once, unlike Strabo, who explicitly mentions Megasthenes as one of his uh, sources. There are several differences between the accounts of Megasthenes and Diodorus. For example, Diodorus describes India as 28,000 stadia long, a Greek unit of length from which you know the word stadium has come. From east to west, whereas uh, Megasthenes gives this number as 16,000. Diodorus states that Indus may be the world's uh, largest river after Nile, whereas Megasthenes, as quoted by Arian, states that Ganges is much larger than Nile. There is a description of uh, Gangari Dai that appears in the writings of Diodorus. Now, Gangari Dai is a term used by the ancient Greco Roman writers to describe the people or a geographical region of the ancient uh, Indian subcontinent. Some of these writers state that Alexander the Great withdrew from the Indian subcontinent because of strong war elephant force of the Gangari Dai. The writers variously mention Gangari Dai as a distinct tribe or a nation within a larger kingdom, presumably the Nanda Empire. A number of modern scholars locate Gangari Dai in the Ganges Delta of the Bengal region, although alternate theories also exist. Ganges, the capital of Gangari Dai, has been identified with several sites in the region. It is well attested by other sources that Megasthenes uh, described the medium or minimum width of Ganges as 100 stadia. According to the text uh, reconstructed by John Watson, Megasthenes uh, Indica describes India as follows. India is a quadrilateral shaped country bounded by ocean on the southern and eastern side. The Indus River forms the western and the northwestern boundary of the country as far as the ocean. India's northern border reaches the extremities of uh, Taurus, the mountains of southern Turkey from Ariana, the Latinized form of ancient Greek, to the eastern sea. It is bound by mountains that are called Caucasus by the Macedonians. The various native names for these mountains include Para Pamisos, Himotos, and Himos, the Himalayas. Beyond Himotos lies Scythia, a region of central Eurasia inhabited by the Scythians known as Sakai. Besides uh, Scythia, the countries of Bactria, an ancient region in Central Asia. Bactria proper was north of the Hindu Kosh mountain range and south of Amu Darya River covering the flat region that straddles modern day Afghanistan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. More broadly, Bactria was the area north of Hindu Kosh, west of Pamirs and south of the Tain Shan with Amu Darya flowing west through the center and Ariana bordering India. At the extreme point of India, there is uh, Nomon, the projecting piece of the sundial that often casts uh, no shadow 
and the Ursa major constellation is completely invisible at night. In the remotest parts, the shadows fall southward and even Arcturus, the brightest star, is not visible. India has many large and navigable rivers which arise in the mountains on its northern border. Many of these rivers merge into Ganges, which is 30 stadia wide at uh, its uh, source and runs from north to south. The Ganges empties into the ocean that forms the eastern boundary of uh, Gangari Dai. Other nations feared uh, Gangari Dai's huge force of the biggest elephants and therefore Gangari Dai had never been conquered by any foreign uh, king. Indus also runs from north to south and has several navigable tributaries. The most notable tributaries are Hupanis, the Huda space and the Aki signs, all difficult names to uh, pronounce. peculiar river is Silas, which originates from a fountain of the same name. Everything cast into this river sinks down to the bottom, nothing floats in it. In addition, there are a large number of other rivers supplying abundant water for agriculture. According to the native philosophers, the natural scientists, the reason for this is that the bordering countries are more elevated than India, so their waters run down to India, resulting in large number of rivers. In primitive times, the Indians uh, lived on fruits and wore clothes made of animal skin just like Greeks. The most uh, learned Indian scholars say that Dionysus, the god of the grape harvest, wine making and wine of fertility, ritual madness, religious ecstasy and theatre in ancient Greek religion and myth, invaded India and conquered it. When his army was unable to bear the excessive heat, he led his soldiers to the mountains uh, called Meru's for recovery. This led to Greek legend about uh, Dionysus being bred in his father's thigh. Dionysus taught Indians several things including how to grow plants, make wine and worship. He founded several large cities, introduced laws and established courts. For this reason he was regarded as a deity by the Indians. He ruled entire India for 52 years before dying of old age. His descendants ruled India for several generations before being dethroned and replaced by democratic city-states. The Indians who inhabit the hill country also claim that Heracles, a Greek deity, was one of them. Like the Greeks, they characterized him with the club and the lion skin. According to them, Heracles was a powerful man who subjugated evil beasts. He had several sons and one daughter who became rulers in different parts of his dominion. He founded several cities, the greatest of which was uh, Patliputra. Heracles built several places in this city, fortified it with water, filled trenches and settled a number of people in the city. His descendants ruled India for several generations but uh, never launched an expedition beyond India. After several years, the royal rule was replaced by democratic city-states although there existed a few kings when Alexander invaded India. India has several mountains with fruit trees of every kind. There are a large number of animal species in India. The Indian elephants are far stronger than the Libyan elephants because of the abundance of food on the Indian soil. The elephants are domesticated in large numbers and trained for war. The gestation period of the elephants ranges from 16 to 18 months. The oldest of the elephants live up to 200 years. Gold, silver, copper and iron are abundant on Indian soil. Tin and other metals are used for making a number of tools, weapons, ornaments and other articles. India has very fertile plains and irrigation is practiced widely. The main crops include rice, millet, a crop by the name of Bosporum, other cereals were pulses and other food plants. There are two crop cycles per year since rains falls both in summers and winters. At the time of summer solstice, uh, rice, millet, bosporum and sesame are sown. During winter, wheat is sown. No famines have ever occurred in India because of the following reasons. The Indians are always assured of at least one to two seasonal crops. There are a number of uh, spontaneously growing fruits and edible roots available. The Indian warriors regard 
Those engaged in agriculture and animal husbandry are sacred. Unlike the warriors in the other countries, they do not ravage farms during the conquest. Moreover, the warring sides never destroy the enemy land with fire or cut down its trees. Because of its large size, India is inhabited by many diverse races, all of which are indigenous. India has no foreign colony and Indians have not established any colonies outside India. The Indians are of pure air. They are well skilled in art, above average stature, because of abundant food, fine water and air. But uh, the situation now is uh, changing because both your water and air is getting extremely polluted in India now. A law prescribed by Indian philosophers bans uh, slavery. The law treats everyone equally but allows the property to be unevenly distributed. The population of India is divided into seven endogamous and hereditary castes. So friends, one must appreciate Megasthenes who wrote such an illustrative book when knowledge was very limited and there were no aids to write. He was born uh, somewhere around 350 uh, BC and he lived for about 60 years. So that's all I have for today. Goodbye.